Things you do not expect to see antelope hunting. That is a sow and two cub G bears. Nuts. <laughs> Figured I'd kick off the 2017 archery antelope season with some backstrap off my 2016 archery antelope. It's super good too. Oh. There's what we're looking for. Yeah, they love it when they're on private. They just taunt you right off the side of the road. It's pretty standard. So I pretty much always hunt solo, and for me, there's there's pretty much two tactics that I use for archery and antelope hunting. And the first is go after every single antelope I see. The second is to be very selective on my stalks and only go after ones that are in good spots. My very first two antelope, somebody would look at me and think I was crazy for wanting to go stalk these things because they were in the middle of the flattest piece of ground that you can imagine. Even the flattest ground, there's still a few little undulations in it and you'd be surprised at how close you can actually get. And my last three have all been much more selective stalks. So I've, I've had success in, in both ways and today I'm going after every antelope I see. fun. <laughs> Got within 60 of a big herd. There was 12 bucks in it. One of them, he spotted me. Dirty bugger. That was my fourth stock of the day. Closest I've been to an antelope today. First day hunting this season. Feels so good to have a bow in my hand. Ah, love it. I'm not just a photographer. I absolutely love hunting. That's why I do it. So. <laughs> Alright, back to it. Just had this whole herd run by at 46 yards. Ah, couldn't get him to stop. Darn it. Full draw anyway, that's fun. So as you can see, sometimes we miss. <laughs> Dang it, spotted a pretty good buck bedded in this big sage flat and it was kind of rolly going in there. And so I dropped my pack and <laughs> tried to video the uh, the stalk, the, uh, the belly crawl. That didn't last long. <laughs> I had to go down this little kind of little incline and then up the other side and he was bedded up on the other side. I just let him stand on his own, let him be relaxed, I put my 60 right on him and let it go and these ones must get hunted a lot because he totally jumped the string and was about probably five yards away by the time my arrow got there. It's not like I'm shooting a super slow setup either so. <laughs> I don't know what the lesson is other than get a little bit closer I guess. That was my 11th stock in two days. First time I let loose an arrow. As the saying goes, persistence is deadly, so gotta pull my head out of the slumps and just keep plugging away. Beautiful morning. I actually heard an elk bugle last night. Really cool. Super excited. Last night I set up a really cool time lapse. Actually, I think it, w it would have been really cool, but I made a mistake. The Milky Way, I thought it was going to pan from this side to that side. It was going to go, whoo, but instead it went, whoo, total mind blank on my part. I should have just watched the thing. Right off the bat, the Milky Way just went right out of frame, and I thought it was going to go the other direction, so stupid. But either way, I want to show you guys how I shot that and how I shot a few of the photos that I did last night as well. All right, to shoot a time lapse, first thing you're going to do is mount your camera to your tripod and then set all of your camera settings to manual. For this shot, I set my aperture to 2.8, my exposure or shutter speed to 30 seconds, ISO 4000, white balance to a daylight tone or about 5000 Kelvin. I just found this is the best color temperature to make the images look the most natural. Then I do manual focus on the lens of my camera to make sure that my camera isn't constantly searching for something to focus on. Then I don't use any filters. Filters just reduce the amount of light coming in. And then I set my intervalometer to 45 seconds which means that with a 30 second exposure there will be a 15 second delay between each photo and then I set my number of shots to unlimited 
uh, so that the camera will just continue to shoot all night or until the battery dies. Lastly, uh, to build the time lapse, I used Lightroom Time Lapse 4 or LR Time Lapse 4. This is a plug in directly into Lightroom. You can also do time lapses internally in a lot of the newer cameras, but I found that the quality of the time lapse that you build with LR Time Lapse is way better and you just have a lot more control over it. All right, lastly, here are a few long exposures I shot. And just to save time, I've just put the settings on the side of each image so you can take a look.